Welcome back to Brittany Automotive. As you guys can tell in the title, I will be talking about how I fit a Gen 5 LT1 in a 1993 Camaro. I know you guys haven't seen me put the engine in the car yet or do any of the work. That will come later. I got so many questions at Lowe's Fest this weekend as to how the heck I fit this engine in this car. It's kind of different. I mean, I think it is different. Nobody's done it yet. So I'm going to get into all of the part numbers and everything you guys need to be able to fit this engine into an F body style like this. With that being said, after LS Fest, the car still has not been unloaded from the trailer. It is dirty as heck from my truck throwing dirt up on it and it's raining. So let's go check it out as dirty as can be. I go anywhere thanks to holly they have created a link to put all of the part numbers of every holly part that is sitting on this car so if i say that it is from holly it is in one link in the description down below thank you so much to them they made that seamless for you guys to just go get exactly what you need so check that link out i could probably sit here and talk about this build for the next 19 years but i'm going to start somewhere and that somewhere is going to be the K-Member. I have a full video on how I installed the K-Member, but it is an LS1 K-Member from UMI Performance. I was very, very pleased with this K-Member. It fit perfectly in the car. And then I used LS1 motor mounts with an ICT billet adapter plate. So ICT billet makes the adapter from the LS1 motor mount to the Gen 5 LT1 and they fit perfectly. It works seamlessly. Now, a lot of you know that I was trying to fit the Holly High Ram on this car. You've probably seen a gazillion pictures of it and me doing a lot of the nitrous stuff with it, but sadly it just did not fit currently. I went at this build as if it was an LS and that's kind of what everybody else said to do. That's what we all thought it was going to fit like. It doesn't, it does not fit like an LS whatsoever. Um, there were several things that failed that do work on an LS car, just didn't work here. One of those things being that I tried to space down the K-member half an inch. We went more than what most people said already, knowing that the Holly High Rim was going to be really hard to fit in there, and it still didn't fit. The whole engine basically has to move forward, because if I don't do that, I have to get a Lexan window or notch the window, and I'm just not sure I'm ready for all that yet. So currently, it has the short runners on it. Now that I've answered some of the questions as to how the engine sits in the car, let's get into the actual engine. The engine is an L87 Plus. It is a 6.2. You guys saw me tear it down to just a block and rebuild it. It is still a stock bottom end, but all the valve train is upgraded. It is a custom cam and it has CHE rocker arms and push rods. And then the heads are milled 50 and then they're supposed to be sent off to be ported by Frankenstein. I just haven't sent them off yet. I need to do that. Then of course I have the Holly low rim as the intake and it's got a double dry stage system from Nitrous Outlet. One of the things that I got a ton of compliments on is my coil mounts. Now these were on the old LT as well and I got just as many compliments on it, but they are still one of my favorite things. That's why I kept them on this car. It is remote coil mounts from ICT Billet and the coil wires are also from ICT Billet. And while we're here talking about ICT Billet, I don't know how many times I could say that in a sentence, but their valley cover is also on the car. And thank you to them because I didn't mention that my car was an L87 plus and the valley cover that they sent actually didn't fit the engine. There was a pretty big gap there. I messaged them and they completely re-engineered a new one for me. So that was very awesome of them. Thank you to them. And I also have their valve covers on the car. The only thing I would say with that is I'm probably going to powder coat them, probably a polished metal if I decide to keep with that look because I kind of like it. I got a ton of twin. I got a ton. Trouble sorry, no, I can't speak. What? Speaking of polished metal, thank you to Holly for the mid mount accessory kit. A lot of people ask me how on earth I got a polished metal alternator and water pump. They came from Holly and the description is in the link down below. Being a Gen 5 LT1, it is still DI and a lot of questions that I get is what fuel pump I am using and what injectors I'm using. They are still the stock LT1 injectors and the fuel pump is a Holly Sniper Dual fuel pump. So far I have had no problems with it and it's working great. Until I have an issue with it, I will let you guys know. 
but so far it is working perfectly with the setup. This has got to be probably the number one question I've gotten about this car is what headers did I fit on here? You guys will see in a past video, I tried to do turbo headers. I wanted fender exits for a little bit just because of the nitrous candles. You know, I wanted that. Um, I really wanted that look, but it just didn't fit. They didn't fit as well as I thought. I got them from Speed Engineering and they fit on an LS, but they don't fit on the Gen 5 LT1. They just don't. So we got lucky and found some hooker shorties that actually fit. The link is in the description on which ones those are. And then from the shorties, we used an LS swap exhaust. So if you were to put an LS in this car, you would go buy this exhaust. It should seamlessly run with an LS. This didn't seamlessly run as well as I was hoping. I think it has to do with a lot of the aftermarket parts already on my car. If it was a mainly stock car, maybe it would have fit better. It just, there was a lot of fabricating that had to be done. Um, basically just tied the shorties into the exhaust and then there was a little tweaking in between all of that. But other than that, it worked great. And that is also in the link down below. The car's being ran by the Terminator X and the GDI controller from Holly. It's a whole new platform for me, so I'm still learning all of it. Um, it's also got the 6.86, 6.87, 6 6.87 Pro Dash from Holly. All of this stuff is still in the link down below, like I said. And then I used the wiring that they sent me, but I have an itch to do a wiring harness and I really wanna go really fancy. So stay tuned this winter for some wiring videos because I'm really excited to get back into that. And I wanna really get into like the nitty gritty so that you guys really understand what a wiring diagram is saying, cause I know that's confusing. So I really wanna get into all of that. So stay tuned for that because there's a good chance this whole thing is gonna get rewired and it's gonna look really good. And it's probably gonna cost a lot, so. Another thing I wanna mention because I got plenty of comments on that as well, what wheels I'm running. These are the Redline series from Billet Specialties. They wanted to market their new red lines and I absolutely fell in love with them. They kind of remind me of my old Jags ones, just a gazillion times nicer. So they are the Redline series. They are the F body version. I am running a pro bracket radial on the car. What else do I want to say? I know I'm gonna end this video and I'm gonna get a question and I'm gonna be like, wow, I should have mentioned that. Well, if I miss something, please let me know in the comments and I will answer you guys and I will try to get you guys all the part numbers. If you have questions and you're trying to do something like this where you have a question if something will fit and now I might've tried it, I don't know. Just let me know. I sent back a lot of parts. I hope this video answered a lot of your guys' questions on what the heck has been going on and what parts I'm using to do what because this is kind of a new thing and I'm really excited to be the guinea pig trying it all out so it's pretty awesome. I always say Instagram sees my updates first so if you guys want updates on the car first there was there's idling videos on Instagram there's all the good schnaz on Instagram. Also I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys for watching and supporting me as well as all of my sponsors. We all know that I thrashed to get that car done for LS Fest, and I am so happy as to how it turned out, and I am not gonna cry right now, but I am just very, very thankful for everybody that helped me get there. There will be more build videos and LS Fest videos coming soon. I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you more than once this week. I will be posting a couple times weekly. So stay tuned and thank you guys for watching.